A question I've received quite a lot that I've never formally answered is about the camera setup that I use for my vlogs, especially my ski vlogs. I've answered in some comments and even some DMs, so I figured if I made a proper video on it, it might help you if you're trying to just use the new GoPro you got to like ski with friends and family, or if you're trying to actually make some ski videos to share on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. I've worked professionally in the video industry for about five years now, so I feel like I've developed a system that is both like ski friendly, but also yields high quality and high production value. I actually got into photo and video watching like the GoPro Hero 2 and Hero 3 launch videos. I remember I was so inspired and just so stoked that you could achieve that sort of quality while doing an activity such as skiing. So my background actually started in action cameras and stuff like that, and then eventually stemmed into DSLR, mirrorless, and, and more proper cinema type cameras. Now there's really three main parts to my ski vlog camera setup that make it so I can capture vlog shots, cinematic shots, and time lapses, while also being able to capture fully immersive ski shots that make it so you as the viewer feel like you're actually skiing down or riding down the mountain with me. Before I get into the actual cameras, it's important to note that I will be upgrading my GoPro cameras for the start of this year, just because I've been using some models that are a few like generations old at this point. So I will be upgrading to different cameras, but the actual like setup and where the cameras are located and how I use them will not be changing at all. I'm just gonna be using the newer models. So the first part of this is my actual vlog setup. This is like the main camera that I use for my whole channel in general, whether it's the summer stuff or the winter stuff. But this is basically the camera that I use for anything that's not filmed with a GoPro. I'm gonna have to back up for a lot of these because I'm gonna need some more room. But this whole setup here is the Canon EOS R with a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens and the Rode Video Micro. This is what I'd use for all of the talking head shots, sort of the cinematic shots when I'm getting on the lift or anything like that. Now this thing is relatively small and lightweight of a setup um, in the 24 Four to 70 allows me to get really versatile shots from talking head sort of stuff um, when I'm actually like vlogging and talking to the camera like this. Um, but also the 70 millimeter allows me to kind of zoom in a bit more and get shots off the ski lift or just get stuff that has a little bit more depth to it to provide more of that like cinematic feel, I guess you can say for lack of better word, where typically I would use Typically I would use something like this. This is the 16 to 35 millimeter. This gets really, really wide shots. But if I just wanna carry one lens on the hill, which is what I wanna do, I transition into using the 24 to 70. And I just find like, while it's not the perfect for vlogging, it's just, it's the best all around lens where I can do everything with it. This little mic on top allows me just to get a little bit better audio. This is a dead cat, which just sort of minimizes any wind noise. But this has just been the best setup that I found to add like a little bit higher value to my videos while not having to lug around like a huge camera. So I can just kind of hold this out. You can see it has the flip screen there so I can see what I'm filming. Um, and I can talk to you guys like this pretty easily by just holding the lens. Um, and then if I need to kind of get a shot of the mountain or a time lapse or something, I can do that all pretty easily with this setup. Now this camera is totally beat up. The touch screen does not work on it anymore because I was filming in the pouring rain up in the Uinta Mountains and it stopped working, but this thing has been covered in snow. It's been hit with paintballs. It's been covered in dust. All the edges are completely beat up, but honestly, it has always worked when I turn it on, no matter what the conditions are. And it's just a camera that I really know super well, and it provides great image quality. So while there are a lot better options out now, I think there's like two new models of this sort of EOS R series. For me, it just does the job, and it's really all I need to make just YouTube videos. Ever since I started using this head cam setup, the consistency of my ski videos has went up like tenfold, I don't, I don't know. But this is what I mean by that. So have you ever had it where you're about to drop into your run, you put your GoPro on your helmet, you point it, you think you have it where you want it, you hit record, you drop in, you ski a great line or, or whatever it is, and you get back to look at that footage and the GoPro is either pointed straight down at your skis and you can't actually see the run, or it's pointed too high up where it just kind of looks like everything is floating. And now essentially like that whole shot just is like, it's just ruined. There's no sort of depth to it. There's no personality to it. 
Um, it's just kind of a crappy feeling. I've had this happen way too many times to where I just figured I needed a better sort of safeguard to this. And so this is why I started using the 360 camera on my helmet. So with the 360 camera here, I just clip this on the very front of my camera with the J buckle. And as long as I'm pointing it just like down the mountain like this, it's pretty much guaranteed that I'm going to be getting the shot. I can have it tilted up like this. I can have it kind of tilted more down. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll basically just put this camera on my head just like this in the morning and just forget about it. And as long as it's pointing down the hill, the beauty of the 360 camera is that in editing, I can basically reposition the shot so it provides the perfect head cam angle. And because it's a 360 degree camera, I can make it so I can get these super, super wide head cam shots which then in turn make it a very, very immersive shot for you guys as the viewer. So the wider the POV shot is, typically it makes it feel more like you're actually there. So you can see my hands, you can see my skis, and you can see the surroundings just like it would kind of be if you're actually skiing yourself. Really the only drawbacks with this setup here is that the 360 camera is kind of heavy, so it can take some time to get used to. And if your helmet isn't tight and you kind of hit bumps with it or whatever, just the, the normal stuff of skiing, it can kind of actually move your helmet down so it's important that you get a nice fitting helmet obviously and then the second thing is that the actual workflow to get the footage off of this camera into a usable format is very very clunky there's two sd cards in this and i have to take the footage and bring it into a gopro software render and export it out and then i can bring it into premiere and it just it takes a really long time so i'm hoping the newer gopro 360 camera the max kind of make this a little bit more streamlined and effective so that I can be quicker in the editing because I love the 360 camera and I want to be able to keep using it in the future. The very last part of this setup is the pole camera. This is the setup that I get asked the most about is how do I mount a camera to the end of my ski pole that you guys see? And it's literally just the GoPro pole mount that they make. It's about 30 or 40 bucks, I can't remember. And it basically just slides on the end of my ski pole. So if this is your ski pole, for instance, I can essentially just take this mount um, and I can just slide it loosen up a little bit and it can just slide right at the end of the basket it can go in front of the basket it can go below the basket whatever you'd like but once I do that and tighten it down if I back way up to show you guys this I now have a camera right on the end of my pole so now I have this and it's shooting back down on me and it's just mounted at the end of my pole what's also really cool about this is they kind of upgraded this mount where you can hit this lever and kind of turn it around so it can face different directions so if you're doing a follow cam you can just keep it on your pole and point it out and then just push this lever and point it back towards you and it's actually very very easy to mount on and off your pole this is the original pole mount that they used to make and it's more of like almost a mini roll bar mount and this one was just a lot less effective because it was a lot harder to put on your pole you couldn't swivel it around so sort of this newer one that they made has actually been really, really great. And what I love about this is I can keep this set up like in my coat pocket. And then when I need to do a pole cam, I can just whip it out. It's kind of ready to go. I just stick it on my, my pole um, and I can start recording. This is really just a great angle to mix in with my head cam perspective and provide shots. If I'm skiing some powder or going through the trees or something between this camera and the head cam, it just kind of creates a little bit more of a fun experience to watch. These GoPros are typically a little bit better quality than the head camera just because I feel like they haven't really perfected the 360 camera setup yet. But the battery like can die on this in like an hour. So I'm always taking like four or five batteries with me for the day. And it definitely, definitely takes some time to get used to skiing with this on your pole, largely because you're losing like a whole pole. So you don't have your four points of like balance anymore. It can also really throw off your center of balance because you're literally skiing with this completely outstretched and it kind of, it definitely is kind of heavy at the end. So if I get into some really steep terrain, I just won't use this because it's just not the safest thing to do. But for the most part, I can usually pull this off and I've been skiing with a GoPro at the end of my pole for a long, long time now. You kind of look like a total goober going down the mountain with your pole out stretching the camera, but whatever. I, I kind of look like a total goober with all of this stuff anyways, but it's always fun to get the footage back um, and just have fun because that's why we're doing this. With the combination of these three cameras that I've talked about, I'm able to create a story and provide you guys with an experience that's more than just a GoPro on someone's helmet going down the mountain.
As I mentioned, I will be upgrading both this camera here to the new 360 camera and the Hero 7 to the newer Hero 10 um, to hopefully provide you guys with like the highest quality content that I can this year. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something or just um, if you're curious how I'm kind of make these videos, that is my setup to use. I will say it can kind of be difficult to carry all that sometimes. So again, that's one of the trade-offs with doing a setup like this. But if you guys have any questions about the gear, please drop them below. If you'd like to know the actual GoPro settings I use, I would be happy to share them and make a video for that. Or if you guys just have any other things that you wanna know about, I'd be down to keep making sort of more of these informational videos before the season actually gets started. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna see all of you guys in the next video. Peace out.